All right, here we are, engine running. Let's select drive. Oh, that doesn't sound right. Yep. Hey, <laughs> yes, we broke the vehicle again. So subscribe on both channels if you want to see how we broke it stuck down in the Wanangatta Valley and how we got out and how to avoid the problem and how to repair it if it happens to you. Some of the information will be on each channel. But for this one, we recently made a video um, called, um, it was to do with cooling system temperatures, what's acceptable, you know, where things should be because, you know, people ask, so they wanted to know what's normal, what to expect, that sort of thing. So we run through that in quite a lot of detail. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Came out in the last few days. That's uh, early to mid-February 2023. Look it up. Um, what this one's going to be about, of course, a video always raises more questions. Won't be too long. It'll be a bit of a short one. But what I would like to cover is people are asking, so what makes a difference besides, we've talked about things like adding bull bars, winches, and these sorts of things that um, block the airflow. And they are the things that make the biggest difference on these Toyotas, on these engines, okay? So let's just go back to some general information we've covered in older videos. So it's always worth, like I said, subscribe, turn the bell on to watch each video as it comes out each day. One video a day, 10 minutes, I think it's highly valuable and you really should be doing it to keep yourself educated. Don't even miss one. You'll just regret it one day. Um, but also go through, comb through the old videos, see what you can find in there. There's a lot of information. So generally a cooling system, let's put it simple, you know, obviously you've got your engine over here. This is the uh, condenser in front of the radiator, but here you've got your radiator, okay? This is the top of the radiator here. It's as simple as this. The engine makes the heat. The radiator is what cools it down by coolant flow. Water, if you like, let's just call it water to keep it simple. Coolant, water, whatever, flowing through hose in one end of the radiator, out the other. That's what cools it down. The air flows through the radiator. The hot water's in there, it cools down, depending which engine, which way it flows. We're not gonna go into that detail, but it's as simple as that. But as you can imagine, if you're stopped in traffic, you're not gonna get any airflow. That's why there's an engine fan here that spins when the engine's running or thermo, or a combination of and thermo fans, depending which vehicle. So this is general to cover all. It doesn't matter if petrol or diesel, or whatever, okay? Obviously, we want things running at the right temperature. So in this case, on this engine, there's a thermostat down low and a hard place to get to, but sometimes up behind that housing there. Again, depends which engine we're talking about. What its job is to do is to control the flow of the coolant, okay? So it's always going to move very slowly. It's going to warm up in the engine. It's got to go through it. That's what goes into your heater core as well. It's like a radiator in, inside your dashboard. The hoses go through and the air flows through that. That's your heater in the vehicle. So if you haven't got a warm engine, that's why your heater inside doesn't work. That's another reason, but we're not going into that detail. But it's as simple as that. The engine makes the heat, the radiator cools it down. Um, obviously, you've got to have a clean flowing, a clean radiator. For There's very thin fins down here, millimeter or two, you know. So if you've got a build up of scale or crud in there, it's going to reduce the effectiveness. If you've been using Toyota Genuine Coolant, like we recommend changing it regularly, like Toyota, and we recommend even more, especially after the first one, once you get to that 150, 200K mark, I recommend every two to three years, maximum, just drop it out. It's in our Flush the Cooling System videos. Please watch and listen to those. I'm not going to go into too much detail. But the things that make it overheat, besides what we talked about in the other video, a lot of dirt and debris, bugs and all that, jamming in here, blocking this condenser, which in turn blocks the flow to the radiator, or sometimes there's intercoolers down here, they can get blocked. So you've got triple layers, maybe a transmission cooler as well. You've got a multitude of layers here that can get blocked up and reduce the flow to the radiator. So all these have an impact, including, of course, your bull bar on this vehicle, depending what bull bar you fit. It's got the plastic at the sides here to guide the air to the radiator still. Um, you'll notice that if you have a look at your new Prado or Hilux, you'll see this sort of design, a big open grill at the front. The newer the vehicles, the smaller their engine, they're going to generate more heat. They need more cooling system and more air to the cooling system. Okay. So the, the standard things that make a difference is blocked up radiators, you know, general information, older vehicles. That was the big problem. Blocked radiators that used to rust up, corrode away, block those cores, you know, radiator 50% blocks it. The more blocked it was, the hotter everything ran. It couldn't do its job when it was up to temp and that thermostat's open, letting it flow, it just wasn't happening. 
other problems people think, oh, I'll just take out the thermostat and uh, we'll just let it flow fast, it'll run cooler. Well, wrong, because it, do it can flow too fast and it doesn't stay in the radiator long enough actually to cool it down. So don't take the thermostat out, just leave it alone. Uh, faulty thermostats in some vehicles, generally not in Toyotas, especially these 1KDs, super rare. So don't touch your thermostat on this unless you've been watching all the videos, you're monitoring the coolant temp and you go, I'm sitting here idly and it's just not 83, it's just 78 or it's 60, whatever it said. It's just not, but make sure, like I said in the other video, run it till it gets hot. Don't make a judgment based on you're in cold winter and it just won't warm up because they can literally take a long time, 20 minutes idling or longer to get to 83. So drive the vehicle, get it up to temp. It shouldn't drop far below 83. If you're seeing it drop to, you know, if you're in snow, cold ice, yeah, there's a possibility that might happen. But I really believe, I haven't been in those conditions a lot. You know, we've been in snow, we've been in ice and all that. I don't see it going below 83. It's going to go 82, 81 max, if you know what I mean, yeah? Momentarily, you know, the thermostat's over, it's flowing, it's really cold, and it sort of just drops that thermostat's just going to close at 82. Anyway, the other things, obviously, if there's something wrong with the engine fan, which in my opinion, very rare, I haven't seen problems with engine fans on any 1KDs where we've had to, you know, redo the oil or change the fan or anything. I've never seen a problem, to be honest, okay? Sometimes I hear some of them a bit noisy. Maybe they're gripping up a bit too much and it sounds a bit like a 747 spooling up for takeoff or whatever jets do when they're going to take off. So sometimes that, but that's never have I had a fan. Um, in these Toyotas, I haven't personally had a blocked radiator in any Prado or Hiluxes because obviously people that come to us generally, especially these days, are taking our advice. So no problems with block radiators, no problems with thermostats, um, no problems with fans. So we don't have, so to put it simple, we do not have overheating problems. Another reason why these Pratos and Hiluxes and the 1KDs last are the best, hang on to them. I reckon they're awesome, you already know that, but they don't have overheating problems. They don't really have cooling system problems. I'm gonna address another question that came up. Oh, why do these Toyotas always have water pumps leaks? No, wrong, wrong, wrong. You know, there's some people replied to that comment, you know, on one of the on one of the posts on of the YouTube video. Oh, you know, oh, because this bit wrong. No, it's not that at all. Every water pump on every vehicle will leak sooner or later. It's as simple as you've got a water pump there, it's got a bearing because it's spinning, and there's a seal in there, and there's nothing wrong with the Toyota water pumps, bearings, or seals. It's just a matter of luck when your water pump leaks. A lot of vehicles leak long before any Toyota ones do. Generally, it's going to be an age thing. It could leak at 60,000 Ks if it's 8 or 10 years old. It could leak at, you know, this is why we do the BFE job, 150K, because generally, in most cases, you're going to get it before it happens. Then you save that whole inconvenience. It's really efficient. That's why, you know, to be quite honest, I'm going to say it. My advice for your vehicle is better than anything else you can get anywhere because it's designed to help you and your vehicle based on the experience of the vehicle technician specializing in these vehicles and these, these cars. Simple as that. It's what we do on our own vehicle. Of course, that's what we're going to recommend for yours, and it works. If it doesn't work... From what we do on our own vehicles, the vehicles we see on the tracks that we take on trips, that we see on trips, the vehicles we see in the workshop at the Prado Hospital, if it works, we're seeing all this experience from being right deep in these vehicles and these engines, okay? So what works is what we tell you works. So if you're trying to work out why you why things are running hot, we'll have a look at your coolant bottle, right? Okay, look, you know, does it look nice and clean and red like our ones do? You see we show them in videos. Um, or does it look thick and green and it's discolored and it's all brown and glow, you know, maybe you do need to pull the radiator out and send it away for cleaning, but maybe you're wasting your time. You'll get a fair idea by pulling things apart, doing the BFE, and if you do that and you see the, you take the hose off and you see crud run at the bottom and, you know, oh, that's terrible. And you can, perhaps sometimes you can see in the radiator at one end or the other and you can actually see the end of the cores and you get a fair idea how blocked they are. But to clean the radiator is what they need to do. They need to physically remove the end tanks you know, unfolding all the aluminium, whatever, take the plastic tanks off. They generally stick rods through. You can use things like, you know, your windscreen wiper rubbers, those bits of steel, you know, send those through there to clean it out. But you've got to be careful because you can damage it. And these days, the price of replacement radiators, you know, it's just, the labour price, it's just not worth doing. It's much cheaper to put coolant. It's going to cost you 80 bucks for two bottles of coolant every two or three years. Much cheaper insurance to look after the radiator from the start, to look after the thermostat, the whole engine, the head gasket, the alloys, the heater core that we talked about going into the dashboard, prevention is better than cure. It's much better value for money. Get onto our videos, get onto doing your own servicing, 
understand everything, get onto it. We're going to train you into a vehicle technician yet because there's not enough decent vehicle technicians out there. And the ones that are left, they're very busy. They're not putting their hand up. They haven't time to watch these videos and say, hey, you know, I want to help out and get some awesome clients into the workshop and look after their vehicles. They're all just too busy. So we're left with me, a few other helpers, not many, and you. So it's all up to you guys to watch the videos, understand, but there's not really much else that's going to cause overheating issues here. Um, let me just think about that. So fans, you know, just, in vehicles in general, it could be a fan problem. It could be a thermostat problem. It could be a, ther you know, th thermo fan problem not working. It could be anything. You've got to work out if you're sitting in traffic. If it's traffic, then uh, it's an, it could be an airflow issue. If it only if you're cruising at 60, 80 k's, it doesn't happen, it's fine. But it happens in traffic, then it's an airflow issue. Just think it through. Understand the cooling system, the things I've explained to you and taught you and you should be able to work it out yourself, okay? Look at that temperature, you know, the thermostat sitting on 76, and then you drive it and it goes up to 90. Well, guess what? Maybe it's stuck in a certain position, so it's allowing it to run cold because it's stuck open two millimeters, so it's running cold, but then when it gets hot and it wants more flow and it won't open because it's stuck there, it's that's why it's going up to 96. So have a good look at what's going on with it. Understand the system, right? And that's what we teach you in these videos. You think somebody will just think waffle, 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 waffle. Well, these people, they don't get it. The people that watch and listen to the end, they understand the systems. They understand how it works. They can think. They use their own brain and they figure it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Got to go. Butter bing, butter boom. You know, subscribe, turn the bell on if you want, or just keep wasting your time watching these entertaining videos to teach you nothing and all the wrong information if you like. Have a great evening. See ya.